This is the second section of chapter eight on modeling in mechanics. And this section is on modeling assumptions. Now remember from the last section, we looked at a modeling cycle when we wanted to construct a model. And part of that modeling cycle was making assumptions. And so we're gonna look at all the different modeling assumptions that we make, all the different terms that we use when we're modeling different situations in mechanics. So there are quite a few definitions we need to go through. So these definitions here are all definitions of objects, particles, rods, laminars, wires, inextensible strings, uh, beads, pegs, smooth and light pulleys. Now next to each one are listed the uh, modulus assumptions that we make. I'm not going to go through all of these, so you probably want to pause the video and read through them and make sure you know the um, assumptions that we make for each type of object. And where I've put like little asterisks here, it means that there are further definitions. So we're now going to go through some other modeling definitions, which include these words, smooth, rough and light. So these are some more assumptions that we make. Um, on a uniform body, if you see this phrase, you need to know what a uniform body is, or a light object. Smooth surface, rough surface, air resistance, and gravity. Just a quick word about gravity. This is a force that's trying to attract everything to the center of the Earth. In fact, any two objects, and the larger the object, the larger that force of attraction. On the Earth, the uh, object is the earth the other object is any other object on the earth that force of attraction is an acceleration it's trying to make things go towards the center of the earth and its value is 9.8 meters per second squared it's an acceleration because we use it so often we give it its own letter g and it's assumed to be this value 9.8 meters per second squared everywhere on the earth now if you do physics you'll probably use 9.81 meters per second squared. But you'll, um, on the front of the exam paper, it will say assume 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, but do watch out, some questions ask you to use a value of G of 10. So just be aware of that. And also, since this value uh, here has been rounded to one decimal place, two significant figures, any questions we're doing where we're using G you should never give exact answers. Ideally, you want to give an answer to two significant figures, but three significant figures are allowed. So if you get, uh, let's say, for example, you're doing a question uh, with G and you get a third answer, don't give that third, round it to either two or three significant figures, ideally two significant figures. So do watch out for that. Example two, a mass is attracted to a length of string which is fixed to the ceiling. The mass is drawn to one side and the string taut and allowed to swing. State the effect of the following assumptions on any calculations made using this model. So firstly, the string is light and inextensible. So there's two words there we need to write the definitions of. So we'll start with light and then we'll do in extensible. So with light, the mass is small, so we can ignore it. So essentially we can say that the mass of the object is zero. We treat it as having zero mass. And also the tension is constant throughout the string. It's going to be the same uh, anywhere throughout the string at the two ends of the string. Inextensible, this does not stretch when the mass is attached. And then part B, the, the assumption that we're using that the mass is modeled as a particle. So with a particle, the dimensions of the mass are small, so that's negligible. The mass is uh, concentrated at a single point and we can ignore air resistance and rotational forces, i.e. spin. So you should now be able to do exercise 8B on page 122. And for a recap, you probably really need to go back and make sure you've gone through all of those modeling assumptions um, and make sure that you know and understand them all.